Miami-Dade County's positivity rate fell to 11.6% after three consecutive days of rising percentages of positive test results. Yesterday, that number was at a pandemic high of nearly 27%. Tonight, we continue to hear from medical professionals sounding the alarm. The last thing you want to see is that instead of flattening the curve, we're going the totally opposite direction because we don't want to have to go back to shutting down the economy. This will have catastrophic consequences for Miami-Dade County and for the state and will definitely increase the mortality. Dr. Lillian Abo went on to say the rising number of cases runs the risk of hospitals reaching capacity. She also said it affects health care workers and hospital staff who have to take care of COVID and non-COVID patients. A sentiment echoed by Martha Baker, the head of the union that represents more than 5,000 Jackson Health employees. She spoke with CBS 4's Jim DeFeedy today. They're tired. Uh, they need time off. They need more nurses. and. Now we have more COVIDs than ever. Let's talk about the staffing level. So like how many nurses would you typically have per, per COVID patient? Uh, well, for an ICU, it's, you know, the typical one to one, one to two ratio. One nurse has either one patient if they're extremely sick, which the MICU has uh, eight COVIDs in one of their units and four of them are one on one. And sometimes that gets stretched and they all have to take two patients. And that's, that's unfortunate. That's when patients don't get turned. That's when patients don't get the care they deserve. That's when the nurse doesn't get to go to lunch. You know, that's, that's tight. That's hard times right there. And you hope that doesn't, you know, fall but once in a while. But, um, you know, it's happened all too frequently. And we just got off the phone with our chief nurse. Uh, and I think she's going to try and fix it. But, you know, nurses are emptying trash cans because it's, Housekeeping doesn't want to come into a room that's got a COVID patient. I mean, nurses are doing unbelievable things. You know, charge nurses are taking patients when they're normally supposed to be free so they can help you. Um, it's tight. And it, do, you, do you feel comfortable sharing the story you were sharing with me about one of the nurses, what they says, an anecdote that they relayed to you just recently? Which one was that? <laughs> the, the nurse who was taking care of two patients who both uh, passed away. Yeah, yeah. They, there was one ICU nurse that uh, in the MICU, and uh, as a matter of fact, he ch shared that story with the chief nurse. Um, you know, I believe these two patients sounded like they were so sick they were most likely not going to make it. Uh, they were extreme COVID positive patients in what what you call proning, where they turn them on their belly so their lungs ventilate better. They were on breathing machines or on vasoactive drips and uh, CVVHD and ECMO and all these you know, very, very, very labor intensive um, maneuvers to try and save their lives. And uh, both patients ended up dying on the same shift. And uh, this patient, this nurse couldn't be with both patients, obviously. How sick these patients were that perhaps death was imminent, but it's a, it's a horrible toll to know that they should have been singled and they were doubled. And your charge should have nurse, had one on one nursing instead they had two one nurse for two patients. Yeah. And you should have a charge nurse free at all times and to help with those emergency situations. And too often the charge nurses are taking patients. And, and that's, you know, 15% of the charge nurses today at Jackson have patients. And again, we're at 85% capacity. Uh, you know, so my biggest concern is not necessarily today. We're tight today. We've got 15% of our units are so tight staffed that the charge nurse has patients. And still, you know, we don't, we think tomorrow will be worse. You know, we think next week will be worse. This trend uh, in patients is in COVID patients and in our volumes at our hospitals is just going up. Um, so it's, it's of concern. I think we have to manage it. I don't, I don't recommending we have to shut it down and cancel electives, but we do have to manage it and be very aware of our nursing capacity and our hospital capacity. And it's not just have an open bed, we'll have a patient in it. We've got to manage it with our staffing, especially in recognition that our nurses are going into, you know, second battle and uh, we're limping. That's not something that's easy for you to admit. You're right. right. I mean, this is you, you, I know I've known you for a long time, Martha, and and your nurses tend to soldier through almost anything for you to admit that they're now they're hurting and they're limping through this. That's a, that's a big statement coming from you. 
Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, I was quite shocked uh, at our meeting with many staff nurses yesterday, what I heard. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to bash Jackson. I love Jackson. I was a nurse there for 35 years. Proud to be president of these nurses and doctors and healthcare professionals that work so hard. I think they're the best, not only in Florida, but in the country. But it's, you know, we cannot have elected leaders uh, saying it's okay to open up and put the health of our community members at stake. And we have always said from the inside of Jackson, if we ever see it looks dangerous, we will speak up. And that's what we're doing now. Jim, I know we have an overflow facility at the Miami Beach Convention Center, but these are some very serious words and very concerning. Uh, they are, and it's a different aspect than we've been hearing about. We've been hearing from uh, County Mayor Carlos Jimenez, from the governor, talking about statistical information like how many ICU beds you have free or how many hospital beds you have free. And they think that because there are free hospital and ICU beds across the county, we're not in a dangerous area. But the point that Martha Baker is making is so important. Just because you may have an open bed, if you don't have the nurse to be able to help the patient in that bed, that bed is useless. And right now you have a situation where you have nurses who are overtaxed, overburdened. You already heard the stories of how nurses which should be doing one-on-one -on -one counseling with patients are now having to deal with two patients at a time. This is a very dire situation. There is a shortage of nurses. That's the real dilemma that's facing the county. And as things get worse, and as we continue to do elected surgeries, as we continue to allow folks coming into the hospitals who do not need critical care, but yet the hospitals want to make the financial commitment of getting money from those patients, this becomes a problem because it takes more nurses away from those who truly need it. And Jim, we heard Martha say that these nurses are, are limping at this point because they are so overworked. But what about their health? Any offer of any insight into infections among these healthcare workers? So uh, Martha shared with me, Martha Baker shared with me something that, that I was just floored by. Uh, she said, this is anecdotal. She's been taking a survey of just a few of the units at the hospital, including they have a nursing home area. She said in the last five, six days, she is aware of 21 nurses and healthcare providers in three separate units who have tested positive for COVID. That's 21 nurses and healthcare professionals who are now sidelined. The other problem she points out is that they are not able to do the testing fast enough. They have two types of tests at Jackson. They have the quick test, which you can get a result within an hour, but they have other tests which take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours or even longer to get, and those tests are taking too long, and where as a result, we've got COVID patients coming to the hospital, and we don't even know it yet.